um, a large group booking me and I took them to Philadelphia for like this huge music festival. So I was doing that, trying to drum up enough money to eventually get my wheelchair lift. Welcome back to Zenpath Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Son. And today we have Shannon, owner of Chase Tran Transit. Um, she's an NEMT company out of Baltimore, Maryland, and we have a great show for you today. So if you're returning or if you are new, you're going to love this episode. Um, but before we get into the episode and before we dive into more information, I have to tell you about our dispatch software. We are a new NEMT dispatch software. Um, we're in beta, so it's currently free. Um, if you are writing everything by hand, you don't want to do that. Um, you want to definitely sign up for our software. It's, um, it's fully customizable and it lives in your browser, so no need to download anything extra. Um, so we're going to leave a link in the comments um, and uh, yeah, let us know what you think of the software. So without further ado, welcome to the show. Shannon, how are you today? Hello. Good morning. How are you, Ryan? I am very good. I'm so happy to have you on the show. So happy to have you on the show. I, um, I was reading your blog the other day and, um, and I learned so much information from just reading, you know, the, 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 a few, a few blog articles. Um, and there was one particular that I read that, um, you know, they just, it went over like everything to uh, take in consideration before booking a trip with NEMT providers, which mm -hmm. prior to reading your, your article, I had no, no clue. I had no idea, you know, what to even ask. Um, and, um, you know, you mentioned CPR and other things. I was just blown away. So what are some, what are some key things that you think that potential riders should ask before booking uh, a trip with a provider, a new provider at that? Um, so I definitely think doing your research to find a reputable provider is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, there are some things that you should take into consideration. You just want to make sure that they have the proper insurance. Mm. You want to make sure they're licensed. So I can only speak from Maryland because that's where I'm based. Okay. I think every state is a little bit different, but to operate a service like this, you need something in addition to your typical driver's license. So here in Maryland, it's called a passenger for hire license. And I believe you have to go through the credentials every two years, but you have to go through a drug screening, a, a extensive background check, fingerprinting. It's, it's a little bit more um, expansive than your typical driver's license. So most of the time, a lot of reputable companies will have this information readily available for a potential customer or client to easily access. Um, the state of Maryland has a centralized database on their like state website where you can look up to make sure businesses are in good standing, things like that. So I definitely suggest customers do their research to make sure that they check all these things out before they send grandma or grandpa or mom and dad um, to a company to transport them or themselves to wherever they need to go. Now, is that each driver has to go through this process? I mean, yes. to provide that information? Yes. Each wow. Driver. So, mm -hmm. uh, so if I'm a customer, I'm a customer, I will mm -hmm. call the company. So I would say, um, you know, Hey Shannon, you know, um, uh, you know, I'm looking for a driver. Do I ask for each individual driver's credentials or whoever driver's going to pick me up or how do I uh, ask? Yeah. If you know, you can ask, um, so for my clients, it's easy because I'm a one-stop shop. So I'm mm -hmm. always the driver right mm -hmm. now, but, um, it would be good to know who your driver is, you know, a familiar face. So you know, who's coming to pick you up, mm -hmm. um, and what they look like. So yes, I mean, you can absolutely pick up the phone and say, okay, my driver, if I were to book with you would be John. Okay. Are you able to disclose John's credentials? And in the state of Maryland, you can call, um, the Public Service Commission, which is a division of the Department of Transportation, and you can go to their website and look up that person's first and last name and their license number, and if it's expired, if it's valid, and the actual number will pull up on the Department of Transportation's website. Oh. So for me, if you were to put in my company name or my name, mm -hmm. my license information will pop up. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what is that? What, you said, what is that website? Um, it's, so it is a subdivision of the Department of Transportation. It's the Public Service Commission of Maryland, the PSC of Maryland. Yep. Got it. Got it. Very interesting. Had yeah. no idea. Like my I'm, information every, is always, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just like, I just like, I learned so much, you know, like, I'm just like, wow, you know, yeah. Well, so much again, information. 
it's different for each state and I don't Mm -hmm. know how different it varies, but my website, my information is always listed in the footer. So it doesn't matter where you click on my website, that information just remains constant at the bottom in the event you need to look up my carrier number. So each, it gets a little bit more specific. So in addition to the license that you need through the Public Service Commission, every vehicle that you have insured also has to get an inspection every year. Mm. And it also has a specific number registered with the state. Wow. So that information is also listed on my (laughs) website as well. And a potential client can also find that information through the Department of Transportation in Maryland. Interesting, interesting. I, yeah. I think the, the the more transparency, the better. You know, like um, you know, it, it just it just feels like um, you know, sometimes I look around and I look at like um, you know, just to see what other companies are doing. You know, are there any mm-hmm. companies? And and it seems like a lot of these companies are very ste- like I don't know if stealth stealth is the right word. Like it's like kind of like under the radar, right? Like they don't, you know, some of them have like a don't have a website at all, or they have kind of like a, a very like half finished website, or mm-hmm. they don't really have a lot of information. You know, um. And so what you're saying is like, there's public information out there and, and how you said, you know, the, the state, you said the state, right? Maryland, mm-hmm. um, it requires that information. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Right. Because that's the more transparency, the more trust. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, at least for me, you know, I will want to know, you know, the most about a company before I put my grandmother, mm-hmm. you know, in the hands of someone else, you know? Absolutely. And I, I am the exact same way, especially And I I will probably get into this a little bit, but the majority of my business is private pay also. Mm. So you're paying out of pocket for this service. I need to be upfront with what I'm offering and to make sure that you feel comfortable knowing that I am licensed in the state of Maryland to provide these services to you because you're you're paying out of your pocket for this Mm. service. Mm. So I think it's very important. I see, I see. So- how did you first get into the NMT business? So interesting story. I never thought in a million years I would be <laughs> <laughs> in this industry, but um, I want to say this was pre-COVID. I don't know how long, but I had an uncle who was in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. in Baltimore, Mm -hmm. um, specifically like Baltimore County area, which is where I grew up in Catonsville. And um, I would go visit him on occasions. And I noticed throughout my visits, um, certain conversations, certain things would always come up. And one of those things was wheelchair transportation. So my uncle uh, had an amputated leg he had a bad fall and he ended up in the nursing home and that's where he resided. I want to say when I started visiting him, he had been there for about a year Mm -hmm. and he would always complain about what his insurance would pay for and what his insurance did not pay for when it came to transportation. So if it was an emergency, his insurance would cover it. But if he needed to go anywhere else, if it was a routine doctor's appointment, if he needed to go to the dentist, if he needed to do anything, he if it was outside of an emergency, he would have to pay out of pocket. And I just remember hearing him complain all the time (laughs) about the cost. And I want to say, yeah, this was probably 2018, maybe. I just remember one time he was so furious and he was upset because his doctor's appointment was like eight minutes, like an eight minute drive Mm -hmm. from his nursing home and the cheapest wheelchair company at the time, it was, I think like close to $200. Wow. For round trip, round trip, round trip. How many, I mean, how many miles are we talking so we can put things in perspective? So eight minutes, I want to say maybe five. Miles, maybe five miles three. unbelievable mm-hmm. unbelievable and I now that I'm talking about it I don't even know if it was round trip to be honest it might have been one way oh my I don't remember exactly but I just know he was it furious he was compl- oh he was very God. upset but he had to pay it you know because they were the cheapest in town and he had to go to his appointment so I just remember thinking to myself well okay there's clearly a need for this um he didn't talk about him enjoying the ride at all he didn't mm-hmm. say anything about it was just he just nothing memorable 
So I was just like, well, I wonder if there would be room for me to get into this game, you know? And again, never thought in a million years I would be here today, but <laughs> that's kind of how I, I landed into this business for Unreal. him. Unbelievable. So, so it, yeah. the fact that you started it to help, you know, it started with one one problem and then mm -hmm. you kind of like snowballed, you know, outwards. Mm -hmm. And you have a bigger mission, right? It's to it's not just to make money. You know, I mean, I think everybody wants to make money. Yeah, but it's yes. to help and to provide a cheaper alternative, right, for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. other people. Unneeded. That's yeah. amazing, especially if it's lower than two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars is just too much for a one way. It is a lot for five miles. <laughs> No. For five miles, it is a lot. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, so what were you doing before you got into the empty space? Were you into um, the health care? Yes. So, yes, actually, I was. So, mm -hmm. I graduated with a degree in human resource management. Mm -hmm. And upon graduation, I ended up in financial services. So, mm -hmm. I was working in a recruiting space in human resources. And uh, Morgan Stanley, everybody, I'm pretty sure we all are familiar. Well, some are familiar with um, Morgan Stanley, which is a, a Wall Street firm, mm -hmm. I believe, based out of, still based out of New York. I don't know. I've been so far removed. <laughs> but <laughs> I spent about four years there. And then I spent four years working for Bond Support Health System. Mm -hmm. I was still in an HR recruiting space. So it was technically healthcare. Well, it was healthcare. I was just in the in the HR world. I do not know if they're called Bond Support Health System anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but it took me about eight years to realize that working in a corporate environment just was not my Award. thing. It wasn't rewarding. It just wasn't. It just wasn't my thing. Um, I did it because my mother did human resources mm -hmm. when she was coming up, and it was good money. And the money was consistent, but I was, I was bored. I was, I was, um, I just felt trapped, mm -hmm. you know, I yeah. would, I would, I didn't feel like it was fulfilling. Um, oddly enough, I ended up leaving corporate America and I got into the food and beverage industry <laughs> <laughs> and I started bartending for a while. Well, a while is an understatement. I was bartending almost 10 years. I still dibble and dabble in, in it now. But surprisingly, bartending is what helped me save enough money to start this business. So while I was bartending, I didn't know, I, I knew I wanted to eventually be my own boss. I knew I wanted to go into entrepreneurship, but I just didn't know which avenue and where I wanted to go. Were you able to transcend any of those skill sets that you require bartending to the NEMT space? Because you're dealing with people all day. Right. I can Absolutely. imagine, you know, you have to have <laughs> yeah. that kind of like personable, you know, personality. And you do. You have this like Absolutely. very bright personality, you know, you're very easy to talk to. Yes, so thank you. And that'd be very helpful in the NMT space. Absolutely. And so I have realized customer service is everything. It is mm -hmm. absolutely everything. I am one of those people that believes all of us should at least work in one restaurant in any capacity, whether you're a host, whether you're a server, bartender, whatever the case is, I think every every single person should at least go through three to four months of customer service experience, especially in a restaurant, because you're meeting people from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. Your Essentially, your income depends on the type of service that you give. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized that I enjoyed talking to people. I enjoyed meeting people. I enjoyed um, experiencing people in their different walks of life. That intrigued me. So moving that to the EMT, the uh, NEMT space, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, just, it just works. You know, a lot of my clients, Sometimes I don't know why I'm transporting them. Sometimes it could be for dialysis. It could be for something that they don't want to do. It could mm. be for all sorts of reasons, right? But I have learned that sometimes they just want to talk mm -hmm. or they just want to listen to music yeah. or they just want to, whatever it is, you know? So mm. most of my 
most of my clients, they want to talk and they want someone who listens. And me being a bartender, that's all we do. I mean, making drinks is easy, but at the end of the day, people come to the bar because they like their bartender. They enjoy the atmosphere. They can drink anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they come to the bar. I mean, they come to the bar because they like the bartender. So um, it definitely resonates. And that is also one of the reasons why I absolutely love this industry. I think a lot of companies just don't give the right compassion and the right um I, I don't want to say that they don't treat their clients like people, but I just hear so many stories about how the transportation that they get is just, they just feel like they're in a taxi. They just yeah. feel like they're just, you know, it's just like, okay, all right, you're at your destination. Bye. You know, Shannon, it's I'm so interesting that you mentioned that because <clears throat> I also, well, I had a last, another guest on um, not too long ago and she mentioned that um, a lot of, you know, the, you know, the, the, the clientele, their families are long distances, right? Maybe they're out of mm -hmm. state or maybe they're out of the country. And so sometimes a lot of these writers, they just want someone to talk to. You mentioned just riding mm -hmm. in the car, listening to music or just someone to talk to. So it's not just, you know, like transportation. It's almost like, you know, it's quality time, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like a personal connection you're building with these uh, clients. Mm -hmm. um, so this is so much more, so much more, right? It than, is. It really is. And I, you know, when you, well, I can't say that. Um, <laughs> I have invested a lot mm -hmm. into my business and every, mm -hmm. I think everybody's path will be different. You mm -hmm. know, there's crowdfunding, there's grants, there's all sorts of ways to, to generate income for businesses. My situation is a little bit different because I literally built it with my own money. <laughs> so I am extremely cautious and I understand the value of people's money. You know, they can choose any transportation provider, but they chose me. So I'm going to make sure that they know that I appreciate them choosing me versus someone else. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Who, um, who's most likely to ride with you? <laughs> Who are your target customers? Um, are you doing post-op? Are you doing... Um, generally like low income I mean like who are you ideally so, marketing to I mean I, so essentially anyone who requires wheelchair accessible transportation mm -hmm. would be my target market mm -hmm. if that makes sense I have focused some of my marketing to local uh, assisted living facilities mm -hmm. senior housing um, but every once in a while, I will get a client who is not necessarily in a wheelchair, but they need, um, medical transportation for mm -hmm. an out, an outpatient, um, procedure. Mm -hmm. So that probably makes up maybe like 10% of my business. Okay. Um, but yeah, any, anybody who requires, it's not, I, I wouldn't like specifically target like a an actual group per se anyone who needs wheelchair accessible transportation mm -hmm. it just seemed like you know you have like this, this soft spot for like you know the, you know you know some people that just need a little bit of help you know especially from the the 200 story right mm -hmm. um and um so that, that's why i asked you know like oh um, yeah like, ab absolutely i mean if if I, I guess okay, so if I were to narrow my target audience to mm -hmm. the elderly or to those who are disabled, they may be on a fixed income. They mm -hmm. may be in a nursing home, or they may be. I, I don't. I don't. And I do apologize. I don't think nurse. I don't think we're using the word the term nursing home anymore. So I'm gonna say assisted living. Mm -hmm. So they may be on a fixed income, or they may not have the type of money that a, a lot of these companies are charging them. So I feel like it's almost like they're trying to take advantage of a population that isn't necessarily able to get out and work like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I definitely take that into consideration with my pricing. And again, it's all in how the customer is treated. They are humans just like us, you know, mm -hmm. one day, God willing, we're going to get there. And I am a huge believer. <laughs> I mean, 
we are, you know, and I, I am a huge, I am an energy person. I am a huge believer in the energy that you put out in the universe, you will get back. So I do the best I can each and every day to treat people the way I want to be treated. And that resonates in my business as well. I have no children right now. I may be a, 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 a patient in an assisted living facility there by myself. I'm going to hope that that energy comes back to me and there are beautiful people in the world who help and take care of me when I am not able to help myself. Absolutely. Karma. So, karma. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Good karma. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I know for sure. I'm a strong believer in karma also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how many, how, well, you started, how long ago did you start? When did, when, when did you start? What year? 2019. 2019. So I started January of 2019. Mm-hmm. And I knew that, so I knew the ultimate goal was wheelchair accessible transportation. Mm-hmm. At the time I purchased my first vehicle, mm-hmm. it did not have wheelchair access. Mm. So for the first year, year and a half, I was in business. This was also pre, well, it was still pre COVID. We hadn't shut down yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing, um, uh, large group transportation. So at the time, my vehicle could seat 15. Wow. So I was doing music concerts. I was doing wine festival transportation. I was doing like birthday parties. I remember um, a large group booking me and I took them to Philadelphia for like this huge music festival. So I was doing that, trying to drum up enough money to eventually get my wheelchair lift. I love that. That's amazing. Yeah. You bootstrapped yeah. your way, you know, you did mm-hmm. what you had to do to, to get to where you want to be. And mm-hmm. you bootstrapped your way there. That's amazing. Yeah. It I think was, it was so many definitely... people overlook that process. Like so many people overlook that process. It's just unbelievable. Well, and I thank you. <laughs> thank you. Unbelievable. Well, I think in it so I think part of working in the corporate world prepared mm-hmm. me for that. Mm-hmm. You know, just planning ahead and writing down a business plan and sticking to the timeline that you set for yourself. It's always a work in progress. I, my business plan, I'm still making changes to it, Mm -hmm. but I just made sure it's like, okay, I can't deter myself from what I really want to do. So until I can come up with enough money to get my lift, I'll do this and I'll do this. I did a lot of, um, pick up and drop off at the airport. Mm. So that was also another big piece of my business before I got the wheelchair lift. And some of my clients from back then, they still reach out to me and depending on who they are, I will still do airport and pick up and drop off. You know, I mean, they're not uh, wheelchair accessible, but I will still accommodate them. Those first clients kind mm-hmm. of like set the tone for the company. Absolutely. Absolutely. You still yes. own and that first the journey. You still I do. You do. Oh, I do. Yes. That Ooh. so as of right now, I have two vehicles. Okay. I'm actually ask that the, next. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm still so I'm actually still running with that same vehicle. Awesome. Um, that is my only wheelchair accessible vehicle mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. And then I do have a um uh just a traditional like compact SUV mm-hmm. for non-wheelchair transports. Mm-hmm. But I am in the process of getting another assess wheelchair accessible van. Okay. Hopefully within the next month, fingers crossed. <laughs> but I am still an employ uh, a business of one. I'm still a company of one. <laughs> so once I get that second van, I'll have to cross the hurdles of hiring someone and uh, expanding, which is exciting. It's also nerve wracking too. You have to kind of trust your baby in the hands of others. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you know, we I, I think it's good, especially getting into this business, knowing your strengths and your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And it's going to help me develop and grow as a person because I am a control freak. I am a perfectionist. And I know in order to expand and grow, I'm going to have to delegate. I'm going to have to let go of some of that responsibility. So it's going to be a big personal um, obstacle for me as well. But I know I'm going to get through it. And I'm going to find the right person. (laughs) 
to help me grow my business. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to it. It's, it's, it's giving me anxiety, but um, <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So it I mentioned, like, happen. I, like I mentioned, like, I do a lot of languages, right? So I know like a little mm. bit of Korean. So they always like fighting, you know? So it's like, it's mm. like, you can do it. You can do it. You right. got this. You got this. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. So, <laughs> so, so you're the only driver currently. Um, how many trips are you generally, uh, you know, averaging per day? So my average daily trip volume is about two round trips. Mm -hmm. I am by appointment only mm -hmm. and I sit and wait with my clients. Mm -hmm. So what I have heard and based off of feedback from clients, not necessarily with my service, but with other wheelchair transport companies is everything's fine when it comes to booking and the transportation company coming to pick them up mm -hmm. but sometimes clients will have to wait they'll have to call to schedule for someone to come pick them back up and that's where the ball drops with a lot of these wheelchair transportation companies because they're either too big or they have a call center and then the client has to call to schedule a pickup and the driver is out doing another job and they're behind, or there's just so many variables that can go wrong. You know, there's traffic, there's, you know, anything can happen, a flat tire. There's just so many variables, you know, a, a battery could go dead. Mm -hmm. So I sit and wait. Mm -hmm. So I build that time in. And generally speaking, I have realized most of the time appointments tend to go over. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times my clients, even though they say, please make sure you're here at 8.30 a.m., mm -hmm. sometimes they're not ready at 8.30 a.m., you know, mm -hmm. especially if there is a son or an aide or a caretaker getting the person ready, there are all sorts of things that could go wrong when it comes to getting someone who's in a wheelchair ready to walk out the door, all sorts of things. You know, I can use my grandmother as an example, you know, we could be ready to take her out and she may need her diaper changed again or, you know, she could just, she could have an accident and that takes time. Absolutely. So I would say two, there have been certain days when I've been able to schedule three. Mm -hmm. um, but I normally try to leave like a two to three hour cushion in between, because again, you just, you just never, you never know. And any and everything that can go wrong, I always just take that into consideration because it could happen. Anything could happen. Yeah. The last thing you want is to, you know, to not be able to, to leave someone stranded, right? Because you can't make another trip because you overbooked, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And I don't, you know, my clients, it, it, it almost makes them feel good as soon as they leave their doctor's appointment or as soon as they are finished getting their hair done or their nails done. I am right there. It's almost like they just feel important. They feel special. It's like, oh, my ride's here. You know, <laughs> they, it, it makes them feel good, you know? And I, it does break my heart a lot of times when I do see, especially leaving like medical offices and buildings, there are people in wheelchairs sitting, waiting for their rides, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And my clients are, you know, they rolling out. It's time to go, you know, and it makes them feel good. And I do feel bad for the other people sitting there. You know, some of them are waiting for, so in Maryland, we have something called Mobility Works, okay. which is, um, it's a state funded program. Mm -hmm. um, well, I can't, well, yeah, it's a state um, specifically maybe to like the Baltimore area, but I think you pay like a dollar or $2 and they will take you, they have like a certain radius. Mm -hmm. Um they will take you to your appointments and pick you up. But again, it sometimes they don't show up on time and you may have to sit and wait two or three hours wow. for mobility. To, it's almost like waiting on the bus. It's almost like a public, a public transportation system for wheelchair accessible or people who are in wheelchairs or who need that, you know, accessibility. And especially since COVID staffing has been hard um, you know, I, the, 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 I, not the PPP, but the, the unemployment payouts, you know, it's just been really hard to employ drivers. Mm -hmm. So that has tremendously affected the public transportation here. So a lot more people have been paying out of pocket for companies like myself to get their loved ones to their appointments and get them back in a timely fashion. Mm -hmm. So 
it may it my clients they're just so happy they're like oh they'll point to me like there she is <laughs> and, you know I'll just drive right on around like yep here I am <laughs> let's go <laughs> so that is pretty interesting because mm-hmm. how does being the face of your company affect your company right like how does it how does it benefit you know you versus you know um these other companies that probably you know you don't really see a face you just see like a logo Mm -hmm. um well I think it I I definitely think it plays a big part in mm -hmm. it so I mean clearly I'm a woman (laughs) clearly I am a minority I'm a Mm -hmm. black woman you know and this whole support black business support minority business support female-owned business support small business has blown up tremendously and I am there are no words to describe how happy I am that this is a thing but I wanted to I wanted to promote that without putting it in words Mm -hmm. (laughs) if Mm -hmm. that makes sense so you go to my website and there is a video. I love it. Uh, yes, yeah, there's a my favorite video. video. All right. There's yeah. a video. Um, <laughs> for, you, for you guys that's watching it, I'm going to plug a link. I'm going well, I'm to I'm show you guys the video in, in the corner. In the corner. All right. Good, <laughs> okay. Continue. Continue. It's, it's an amazing video. It's an amazing video. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. But yes, there is a video of me and it's uh, uh, pretty much my mom, my dad's in the video all of my best friends <laughs> it's like you Shannon's know. going off to school for the first day yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so that was my way to illustrate hey this is me this is the face of my company I am a woman I am black but I am family oriented I'm friends oriented I am all about family support this is what you're signing up for when you book with me you know it's um I want my my clients to feel welcome I want my clients to feel like they are part of an extended family so the video hopefully portrays that I know you've seen it and you love it so and I appreciate that and I hope people who come to the website see it and and think the same um you know and then people who haven't seen my video you know for the first time if I show up and they're like, oh, you're the owner. I think it, it, it makes clients and customers feel good that there's someone younger. Um, I mean, I'm almost 40, but, uh, you know, they say black don't crack. But <laughs> <laughs> a lot of my clients think I'm a whole lot younger than what I am. And I think it makes them feel good to know that there's a younger generation who understands the trials and tribulations of securing you know, reliable wheelchair transportation, and they have a, I think, a better appreciation. And they're like, wow, you know, this is great. Like, you're so young. And this is this is your company. This is your vision. It just, I think it motivates them in some way, versus, I guess, a company who, you know, the owner looks like them, you know, they're older, and they can barely push them themselves. I don't know, but it somehow gives them some sort of motivation. And it makes them feel good that a younger person is running the show. Absolutely. I, I just say like, for me, when I when I when I seen the video, it, it was like the whole package, right? It's, mm. it's the fact is like, you're right, you know, you, you do have, you know, you know, key characteristics, you know, like, you know, you are a woman, you're a minority. But it's also like, you can you can resonate that personality off the screen, mm-hmm. you know, from that video. You see the smiling faces, so you see the support system. You mm-hmm. see, you know, like how much pride you take with you know your work, you know, just by you know like how much effort you put into that video alone, you know. Thank I you. Told you. Shout before. out to my, fr- uh, yeah. my, my videographer. <laughs> Shout out to them. <laughs> yes. Shout out, Amini. 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 I wish I had his contact details. <laughs> so you could drop it in. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> And it just, it, it gives you that nostalgic, you know, I, I was born in the nineties. Right. Mm. And uh, it gives you that nostalgic, like, uh, you know, like full house vibe, like of like mm. that, that intro where it's like, yeah. everywhere you go. Da, 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 and everybody's like, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's so nostalgic. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so mm, relationships are very important for you. Um, mm. 
how important is business dev in actually showing up to hospitals, making those connections? Do you do you do that or? Um, so I wouldn't necessarily say hospitals, especially mm-hmm. given the current climate. Um, I think a lot of hospitals right now are still limiting who can come and go, especially with, with COVID and the numbers, unfortunately, creeping back up. Mm-hmm. But I think when an opportunity presents itself or when I have an opportunity to speak to someone, say for instance, a liaison at a assisted living facility, or, um, you know, I've, I've targeted, um, senior centers. Mm. I think once the opportunity is given Mm -hmm. the way that a small business owner or an entrepreneur should continue to maintain that relationship is to make sure you show up on time. If they give yes. you an opportunity, make sure you show up early. Mm-hmm. Show up early. On time, absolutely. Follow up, follow through. Um, and I think that's how you continue to build your trust. Um, of course, professionalism is everything, you know, and they're more than likely to pass your name and your information off to another business or another um, hospital mm-hmm. per se. Um, most of my, bu- so I want most of my business right now is word of mouth. I could market on Google. I could market on social media. Most of my business is word of mouth. So I think when that door opens, because it will, Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. gonna open. Absolutely. You just have to make sure that you keep the door open. Yep. And you just keep the lines of communication open. So for example, um I was given an opportunity to work with the housing authority of Baltimore City. Mm-hmm. So their resident board of directors, one of them is um in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. So it came time for, I believe, their election process, mm-hmm. and they wanted to find a company who was able to transport all of the board of directors to each facility in Baltimore, each each one of their properties in Baltimore City together. So there was a mm-hmm. total of five. One was in a wheelchair, right? Mm-hmm. So I was given the opportunity. The day came. I showed up on time. Mm -hmm. I made sure everything went smoothly. And after it was done, I followed through, you know? Mm -hmm. So the person who coordinated everything, they didn't ride along with me and the the group, but I made sure that once the job was completed, I emailed her or I text her to just confirm. I dropped your resident board of directors back off. I look forward to doing business with you in the future, you know, just following up. And again, I think that pulls back from my corporate days and just following up and just making sure you have documentation and things like that. I think that honestly is a key to establishing those relationships and maintaining them. Solidifying that, like solidifying that and making it all tie together. Absolutely. You know, when um, the holiday season comes around, you know, you keep those business cards, you keep those addresses, you know, send a holiday greeting, you know, you just make sure that you keep these relationships, you keep them um, on your radar and vice versa. I love that. that makes you, sense. Ne- you never miss a beat. I love that. No, I love you that. Can't. You can't. I love that. You cannot. <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> Absolutely cannot. <laughs> for people that's interested in starting an EMT company, um, you know, a lot of people want to skip steps. Skip, skip, uh, skip steps. You mm-hmm. mentioned that you know you had to do A before you did B before you did B before you did C you had to do B and then you you know and so on. Mm-hmm. So before you know people decide, hey, I want to start an EMT company. I'm gonna get my first van. What's something that you think they should do um, that should or at least consider before getting that first van? First whether it's insurance steps. or whether it's insurance or whether it's, you know. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's, it's just doing your research. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the biggest thing would be to determine where you're going to set up shop, mm-hmm. where you're going to, where you're going to focus your business and where your, your service area is going to be. Mm-hmm. So I can give you an example. I have a friend who is in 
we went to high school together, but now he is based in, oh, all the people in Florida are going to kill me. <laughs> Kissimmee, Kissimmee. Kissimmee. I think that's how you pronounce it. Kissimmee. Because <laughs> if you pronounce it the other way, they get angry. Got it. <laughs> it's close <laughs> to Orlando. It's close to Orlando. And he had a vision to start something very mm-hmm. similar, senior mm-hmm. transportation, wheelchair transport. So, you know, I sat down with him and... I made him, you know, kind of just do a lay of the land. And I quickly realized that there were probably at least 25 to 30 senior transportation businesses that were already established that had already been in business 10 plus years in that specific area because it is a retirement destination. Yeah, yeah, Florida for sure. But he didn't take that into consideration Mm. before he just said, okay, well, you know, so I said, I I think you still, you have something here, but I just don't know if this specific area, and again, I, you know, I didn't want to deter him, but I was just like, you know, you, it's, you have to consider the market before you jump into it. Um, So that's definitely one thing I would. I would take into consideration, you know, just do your research, see where your competitors are, how many there are, (laughs) and if you would fit into that, you know, what would you offer if your market is oversaturated? How is that, how are you going to set yourself apart from someone not selecting you and Mm -hmm. selecting, there's 20 other reputable wheelchair transportation companies. So what's going to set you apart? right true true um so i would definitely take that into consideration i mean i would also make sure you research startup costs um again everybody's a little bit different when it comes Mm -hmm. to funding you know you could just have a ton of money you're sitting on or you know i did have a few people approach me about like crowdfunding and then there's another one where um i guess you pitch your idea maybe this is the same i'm not sure you like pitch your idea and you can get investors and things like that but you definitely have to figure out um, your money, your startup money that, that, that and where capital. that's going to come from and how you plan. So I, I, essentially, it sounds like, you know, a business plan. I mean, do you together, need a lot of upfront capital, though? Like, Not hmm. necessarily. I mean, are we talking like, double digits or, you know, like triple well, digits? Or? So. And again, I think it just all depends on where you start. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned before, I had enough money to get a van, but I didn't necessarily jump straight into wheelchair accessibility. Got it. Got it. I did group transportation Mm -hmm. and, you know, airport pick up and drop off until I garnered enough money to get a wheelchair lift converted into my van. Mm -hmm. So, and I have a Ford Transit XLT, which is a huge commercial vein, right? So if you start smaller, Mm -hmm. the money that you kick out up front is going to be significantly less, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, there's um, Honda Odyssey. So I think there's like one, two, I think there's like three main like minivans that a lot of companies use for CMS one of them. Say it again. CMS, is that one of them? CMS? C- I well, I was, I was yeah. sorry. I meant a, like car brands. Got it, right? got it, got so, it. So a Honda Odyssey, there's the, the Dodge Caravan, mm-hmm. which is um, now I think it's like Pacifica. And mm-hmm. then there's one more. I think it's a Teo, T- Toyota Sienna, maybe. Like got those it. are the three main ones. So I think if you start your business with like a smaller vehicle or mm-hmm. a fleet of two or three of those versus going for like, a huge van like mine <laughs> it just you know I think it just it just all depends on where you start I see I see so and so I it's almost okay. like you're just saying like like try to start don't try to do too much all at one time you know start small and try to crawl your way into you know well, where you want to be I that was what was comfortable for me mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it worked um but again you know I'm not a risk taker I know mm-hmm. me I'm not yeah. a risk taker. I mm-hmm. could have, I could have went big when I mm-hmm. started, but I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Mm-hmm. So I slowly started, you know, I, I put my foot in the water, I tested it out. And yeah. then I put my other foot in the water. You know, I mean, 
everybody's different, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I could have threw all my eggs in one basket and Mm -hmm. I could have just jumped right in there. But Mm -hmm. again, I did it at my own pace Mm -hmm. and I did what was comfortable for me. Mm. So, and again, if you're sitting on a nest egg, if you have an investor, if you're going into this with a partner, Mm -hmm. you know, your options may be bigger. You may have, um, I guess, um, uh, a greater risk to 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 um, invest more versus um, my situation, if that makes sense. Absolutely. So you know, I don't want to. I don't want to deter people. You know, if you are adamant on this business and you've got the capital to dive right in, by all means, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just very cautious. I'm very. I just. It's just me as a person. Um, I, I, I'm just glad I took the avenue that I did because again, this was new territory for me. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have anybody to tell me how this was going to go. Mm-hmm. So I took baby steps <laughs> the whole way. Like, okay, oh, yeah. I think this is safe. So, okay, I'll go, I'll go a little bit further. It's like, okay, that worked out. So, all right, I'll take a, I'll go a little bit more. <laughs> that was my, that was my approach. So what yeah. can, what, what can riders expect riding with you versus other, other people in, you know, around the world, around the world or in your community? Um, mm-hmm. Well, I mean, like I said, I sit and wait with my clients. Mm-hmm. So you never, you never, ever, ever have to call to schedule a pickup. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's just, it's crazy how the universe works. Right. Mm-hmm. Because like I said, I am my only driver. I am a company of one. Mm-hmm. So it's easier for me, mm-hmm. but it also makes my clients feel great to just know that they don't have to worry about calling I'm right there. I am literally just right there. As soon as they're done, they can go home. But it works out for me too, because there's no way that I would be able to keep track, drop this person off, then go do this, you know, pick up this person and drop them off and then go back and get this person. And I would drive myself. It's a lot. Yeah, It is a lot. (laughs) And this is, you know, this is, this will be easily manageable once I get more manpower and I'm able to delegate and I've got more drivers on the road but Mm -hmm. um that's one thing the second thing is I think just top-notch customer service Mm -hmm. top-notch customer service um and when I say that I mean that as in me just being myself yeah Yeah. (laughs) I'm not faking the funk I'm not trying to overly impress my clients I'm just being who I am and I think that just makes them feel comfortable like she's just she's just a normal girl she's just trustworthy. regular yeah, yeah. You regular know, it's trustworthy like, yeah absolutely there's no bells and whistles here this is this is what I do I want to make sure you get to your appointment on time I want to make sure that you feel safe that you're comfortable um, I ask my clients if they have a music preference, you know, that's yep. some, some of my clients don't want to talk, you know, and I am perfectly fine with that. You don't want to talk. What do you want to listen to? I, I, I had a client who he wanted to listen to music on his way to his appointments, mm-hmm. but after his appointments, he just wanted to write in silence, mm. no music. And he didn't want to talk. And that's perfectly fine. That is absolutely fine. Right. So I just want my co- Whatever it is, I just want my clients to feel comfortable. So um, just putting them at ease, I think, and me just being who I am, I think just sets me apart, you know? And again, I'm an energy person. So I feel like sometimes I can pick up on their energy. So if I feel like they want to talk, I'll talk, right? If I feel like they're, you know, someone who is receptive to comedy, I may say a joke or two, you know, but I feel like sometimes some people just aren't with any of it. They don't, they don't want, they don't, they don't, they don't want you to talk to them. They just, they're angry for whatever reason. And that's fine. We're humans. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to have a chip on your shoulder. That's fine. I'm just going to (laughs) drive, you know, but I think it works. You know, I mean, my client who 
my client who uh, wanted to listen to music on the way, and then mm -hmm. my client who wanted to, you know, ride in silence. I thought he hated me. I completely, I was just like, he doesn't want to talk to me. I'm just fine. <laughs> I'll just put on some music. And then when I take him back, you know, he's, he's like, no music, please. Okay. <laughs> but his sister, <laughs> so his sister was the one who was coordinating all of his rides. And she was mm. like, oh no, honey, he loves you. He <laughs> rant and raves about you all the time. And I'm like, really? <laughs> um, that's his image. So, that's his image. He can't let go of his image, you know? Well, and then the last thing is um, cleanliness. So mm. my clients always, always, I always get compliments about how clean my vehicles are. Mm -hmm. Like, and I do have slight OCD. Mm. <laughs> like I mentioned, I am a perfectionist and I do spend a lot of time in my van. Like I said, I'm sitting and waiting for you. So I don't, I don't want to sit in a van that's junky and, you know, nasty looking. And of course a client doesn't either. So my van always smells nice. I'm constantly vacuuming. So that's always the first thing that my clients recognize. Oh my gosh, this van is so clean and it's so nice. It's so beautiful. And I operate my lift. So I got my, my lift is a little high tech. I operate it from my phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they love it. They absolutely love it. Like wow. I can just press a button and the lift will go up and my clients just feel like they just, it's, it's almost like the Cadillac of wheelchair. Bands. It's they're an experience. Just, You're it is. An experience. Just like, yeah. this is so nice. And oh, <laughs> you know, sometimes I'll let my clients press the button, you know, and they just feel, you know, it's just the little things. Right. Yeah. And they're so impressed. I'm like, you can press the button. I'm like, it's easy. You want to do it? And then they're like, <laughs> okay. And, Absolutely love it. You know, so again, it's just, it's all about the experience. Like you said, that's your, your morale is so high. Like what's to contribute to that? Is it, is it the, is it the community that you have behind? Like, what's the secret? Like you just, you just have this like, like burst of energy of like, just, you know, Thank you. Is, is, it, is it the, yeah. What, what's the secret behind your morale? I, so I think I don't, I just, it's not money. It's mm -hmm. not money driven. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's just me being a compassionate person. Mm -hmm. And it's just me understanding the full circle of life. Mm -hmm. And even though a lot of my clients are older, they may not be able to speak or they could be recovering from a stroke or a heart attack, or they could be going through dementia or whatever it is they're still human. They still mm -hmm. have feelings. They still want to laugh. They still want to do all the things that they were doing before they fell ill, or even if they were the way they are their entire mm -hmm. lives, they're still people. Yeah. So I do it, I guess, because, and I just, I don't, I don't know. I guess it just comes natural. I, well, like, do you have like family behind you? Just let you know, like, hey, we support you. We're behind you. Do you have like a lot of friends? Is just constantly in your corner. Any yes, external factors? So family, yes. So mm -hmm. this hasn't been my first business venture. So, okay. like I said, I've always wanted to get into entrepreneurship. I just didn't know what and what would stick. Mm -hmm. So this has probably this is probably like my third business venture. Mm -hmm. that actually stuck <laughs> and then I realized okay I'm good at this I love doing it um my mom my dad my sister they've always been supportive of all my business ventures mm -hmm. so regardless of what this is I think it's just it's my family so they're gonna support regardless they support mm -hmm. it so prior to this I um I tried to get into like the vintage clothing business mm -hmm. I tried to start that like a a thrift store, so to speak. Um, I realized probably a year into that, it wasn't for me. You know, it was just like, I don't want to go shopping for other people. It's like, <laughs> I don't want to, you know, if it, it was, it was just, it was a hobby that turned into something. And I was like, okay, I don't like this anymore. This hobby now feels like work. Mm. I don't want to do it. Yeah. And then a mobile bartending business became a thing. And then I realized I was like, you know what? 
I don't like this. Uh, this is, I, don't, I don't like it. You know, it's like, I'd rather just go to a bar and work at a bar that's already established versus me bringing an entire bar to someone. I was You're like, right. no, this isn't for me, you know? So I think my family, regardless of what the vision was, was going to be there to support. Mm -hmm. Now I have had friends who a lot of them, especially the ones in the video, mm -hmm. shout out to my friends in the video. <laughs> they have been supportive since day one, right? Mm -hmm. But I have also had other friends who have, I'm not going to say they try, they've tried to deter me in other ways, but I have had friends who have suggested, especially when everything shut down, mm -hmm. to sell my van and to give my business up because it's like, well, everything shut down. Nobody's going anywhere. So you're just losing business. You mm. might as well just, you, you're not making any money. Mm. And it's just like, okay, are you really my friend? All right, well, okay. All right, thanks for the <laughs> advice. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it's, it's, it's all hand in hand. And, you know, and I appreciate people like that too, because you, know, you, need, you need those people to push you even further too. Absolutely. You know? So I think my support system is strong. Um, there have been times when I've called on um, a couple of friends to help me out. Mm -hmm. um, there was one job that I had. It was a family of like, I think it was a family of 10. Mm -hmm. And I needed a close friend of mine to drive my other vehicle because they were going to the airport and they had, it was a destination wedding. Mm -hmm. So they, there were, I think it was like eight, it was eight adults and like three kids. Okay. So they had their regular luggage, plus they had wedding luggage. Wow. So I needed one of my friends. I drove my van, but I needed her to also drive my other vehicle so that they could all get to the airport together and then also bring them back when they got home. So, and this particular friend, she's helped me out on several other occasions with other like small things with my business. So it, it definitely helps to have a good, a good, strong support system for sure. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. What does the future look like for Chase uh, Courier in transit? Um, is it well, more employees? Is it yes, yes, yes. I <laughs> don't have the time frame for that as of right now, but I think um, by, by the fall, Okay. I think by the fall, which is right around the corner. I mean, it's it's almost June and the school year is going to be starting in what, August, September. So I think by then I will either have at least one other employee or I will hopefully be partnering with um, another company to subcontract some work to them so we can kind of, you know, work off of each other. Um, awesome. And like I said, I plan on getting another wheelchair van, hopefully within the next month or so. Whoa. Oh, so that's exciting. Yeah. It's very exciting. Lots <laughs> of updates. Exciting. Lots of updates it coming is. very soon. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So <clears throat> anything that you would like to get out there, like to, you know, let people know? In regards to? Well, like, you know, anything you like to, you know, get out there, like promote, um, you know? Oh. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, what do I want to, <laughs> <laughs> um, mentorship. So I know a lot of the viewers watching are, well, clearly interested in entrepreneurship specifically in this industry, possibly. So if there are some things that we didn't really touch on today and you have more questions and you want to dive a little bit deeper, I'm definitely more than willing to have them reach out and, you know, talk a little bit more about the specifics of this business or just entrepreneurship in general. This isn't my first rodeo in the, in the business. You know, I think it's, it kind of really just comes down to what you're comfortable with and what you see yourself doing, whether you're making money or not. Um, so yes, absolutely. I'm definitely open to providing advice or consult consulting. Um, and I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook. I'm, I'm not very social. You found me on Instagram. <laughs> I think just because of my age, I'm on those platforms. Um, I'm on LinkedIn as well, but the majority of my clients are 
like baby boomer or older Mm -hmm. and they're not really on social media you know Mm -hmm. they're old school i mean they they'll they'll google they will google they're very i think facebook i think a lot of baby boomers are on facebook right would you think yeah yeah they are but a lot of my business comes from like i said word of mouth Mm -hmm. or they'll find me on google 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 or any uh uh, a lot of my clients find me on yelp too i see i see i see so and yeah mostly mostly word of mouth but yeah facebook i was so my parents are baby boomers and they're not on facebook but i guess they're probably the odd men out (laughs) (laughs) everybody has a facebook account right So yeah, I am. I am on Facebook. Awesome. Um, so, so if people want to reach out to you, they're gonna reach out to you either, on any of these platforms. Your Facebook, platform. your Instagram, and you will check messages for all these platforms. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, they, they all come push notifications to my phone. Um, the best place, it, honestly, it's all the same okay. to me. It's all the same. <laughs> awesome. Facebook, awesome. Instagram linkedin i'm trying to think if there's any other platform that i'm on i don't think so i'm not missing one i don't think so no twitter i can never i, I still haven't figured out twitter i'm not on twitter awesome no tiktok i no don't know I, <laughs> oh, I love tiktok oh, I, think that, no, just I don't understand. I, I, love TikTok. I, have, I haven't even i haven't even figured it out yet and honestly i don't even know if that i, I guess businesses are on tiktok I think it's, it's, just, all, it's all like niche to like industries, depending on what industry you're in, you know? So, yeah. 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 I mean, I think what you're doing makes a, a lot of sense, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. You don't need to talk. Yes, but right. yeah. But yeah. <laughs> like if, if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out to Shannon on any of these platforms. Yes. Um, you even check out our, check out our website. You have to see that video. Um, it's going to be on our website. And we, like I said, we will put the link in the description um, sure. to the social and all or in her website so you can be able to see that video because you're going to want to check that out for sure yes thank you ryan I absolutely <laughs> and it was amazing talking to you today it was amazing likewise talking to you. yeah absolutely yes thank you and so much for having me as a guest on your on the show i really no, appreciate no that. problem no problem and thank you all for watching i hope you really you know learned a lot and found this very insightful and uh yeah drop a comment below let us know what you found helpful you know what you would like to you know what questions you would like to hear from Um, from our future guests. All right. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you so much. All All right. Bye.